Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench, I have the JAT 801 amplifier project board. I have it mounted on this aluminum here. I want to run some stability tests. Now, some components are not installed on the board. They're not needed for the testing. I want to recover parts off this board because it's going to get redesigned anyway. So, you know, the less parts I have to waste, the better. I'm not going to recover resistors. It doesn't make any sense. But, you know, these more expensive parts like the capacitors and the larger resistors here and the transistors, I want to recover those. These are kind of stand-in transistors because these big guys are too big to fit on this board. So that's one reason to design it. Another reason is I want to put these transistors under the board. And instead of sticking out the side, they'll go underneath and you can screw it right down. So it takes a lot less room. And this uh, transistor here, which monitors the uh, temperature on the heat sink here, really needs to be close to these transistors so when I mount the transistors under the board this transistor will be somewhere over here close and you know be close to these transistors as well instead of way over here so all that temperature can soak up into the heat sink and get measured by this transistor and that helps the amplifier be thermally stable. Well, I did some test with thermal stability. What I like to do is mount it on an inadequately sized heat sink, you know, something small like this. So this is extremely too small and too thin. You want five or six millimeter of thickness so the heat can spread out and get over to this quick enough because it, you know, it takes some time. And if it's too thin, the heat really doesn't distribute that well. Now, I'm running more current in the voltage amplification stage where this thermal monitoring transistor is. Bias servo, VBE multiplier, whatever you want to call it. And um, when I first powered up the amp, I could not adjust the current down enough. It was running too hot. It was running at like 150 milliamps of bias in the output stage. So I had to adjust the circuit here so I can put it into a range that the trimmer would operate on. You know, allow me to set the bias, you know, from uh, under bias condition to over bias range. So the trimmer operates in that range now. To cut to the chase, uh, thermals are working just fine on this amp. So what I want to do now is uh, take a look at some waveforms. I want to look at the uh, sine wave, run it up into clipping, see what it looks like. Also, I want to do some square wave tests, which are often called step response tests, and put pure capacitive loading across the output. See how the amp responds, see if it is stable or not. Hopefully everything works out and we can continue on with this project. Okay, got everything hooked up, powered up. It's driving the new load bank there, new dummy load, set for eight ohms. And we have a beautiful sine wave there on the screen. Adjust the trimmer. I'm going to have to adjust that so we can get into clipping. Okay. I don't like that. I'll zoom in on that. The top's not bad. This is a 10 kilohertz waveform. But that bottom, see how it hangs on? It's kind of like a little hang on there. I 
and it kind of rounds off as it goes into clipping. It kind of rounds off there and hangs on. The top is okay. Slight hang on. I mean, this is 10 kilohertz. I don't really care if there's a slight hang on, as long as it's not too severe. But I don't, I don't like what's going on. That's kind of unfortunate. Let's see what a 4 ohm load does. Not too much. Getting a notch. A little bitty notch there. I better watch myself. I forgot I'm on a small heat sink and this thing gets hot. But it doesn't run away thermally or anything. I'm going to lower the voltage to 15 volts. All right, how about 20 volts? Shouldn't dissipate as much heat that way. Plus or minus 20 volts. So let's turn the feel tech back on. And yeah, it's the same thing. You can usually test the amp at a lower voltage. You want to test it at its normal operating voltage, but Sometimes you can get away with running it at lower voltage because we're seeing this exact same thing. Let's see if we get that notch at 4 ohms here. Yep, still get that notch on the top there at 4 ohms. Let me poke around here and see what I can find. I think I know what the problem is. It seems to be the saturation of the voltage amplification stage transistor. Right now I'm on that transistor's collector and it doesn't matter if I have a load on the output or not, it's the same. So the output's not doing this because like I say I can load it or unload it and I still get this waveform, that strange waveform on the bottom there. Okay, so now we're looking at the signal that's on the base of the voltage amplification stage transistor. And I had to turn up the sensitivity on the scope here so we can see it better. Because it is a pretty small waveform. But what we're seeing is a negative going bump and a little positive going blip. So what's happening when that transistor saturates, it can't you know, uh, make the output go any lower because it's clipping. So it's sending a, a bump to correct for that. It's trying to force it, which, of course, it can't force it to do when it's already at the supply rail. So, yeah, that's effective negative feedback. And that blip there is probably the hang-on. It's trying to correct for that. So yeah, like I said, I think it's the saturation of that transistor. And now I have to determine what kind of corrective value I can do. Let's see, what is it? It's this guy right here, the, the troublemaker right here. Uh, what can I do about that? Use anti-saturation diodes or something? Clamping diodes? So I'll have to uh, investigate and see what I can do with that because I don't really like what I'm seeing in the waveform. It should be much cleaner all the way up to clipping. Okay, so that's one problem. Let's take a look at the step response now. Okay, square wave response tests. That's a pretty nice looking square wave. There's no ringing or overshoot. Anything weird going on? I do have the low pass filter removed. Oh, here it is from the input. There's no output coil connected because I want to see how the amp works naked like that. So I'm going to put loads across it capacitive loads, pure capacitance. Now, these feedback amplifiers they don't really like to drive capacitive loads and they can break out into oscillation so I want to see how immune to that this amplifier is the JAT 501 amp was very good even without a coil 
and I couldn't force it to break into any oscillation. So it, it's a very stable amp. But let's see how this thing does. So, let's point at the scope here, zoom in a bit, and let's put a capacitor across the output. Let's start with a 10 nano farad. Okay, here's a 103. Let me get that across the output here. Uh, nothing. These small ones usually don't do anything. I'm going to move up to uh, one an order of magnitude larger, a 0.1 microfarad. See what it does. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Look at that. It breaks out into oscillation. Well, we're not starting out so hot with this amplifier. Let's move up to a point two. Well, this one's a point two seven, it says. Yep, it makes it oscillate. A little lower frequency, larger capacitance. The top of the waveform is staying clean. It's the bottom of the amplifier that seems to be the problem. Now I'll try a 1 microfarad. That's as large as I recommend going. Watch when I put this capacitor across the output. Watch the top there. It oscillates, but then it goes away. It, see? It kind of shrinks. That is strange. Let me turn the current limit all the way up. I'm running it at plus minus 20 volts. I don't want to burn stuff up in this test, but that is interesting. Okay, yeah, it might be a current limit thing because now it's oscillating on both rails. I switched it to 4 ohm load. Let's go back to 8, see what it's doing. Just kind of playing around here. Yep, same thing. Well, just to show you the difference, this is the JAT501, and I'm going to put this capacitor, this is the 104 or 0.1, short right across its output terminals and scope the results. Look at that. Complete stability. You see a little wiggle there at the top? That's normal. You should see that when capacitive loading. But no oscillation. Now I bypass the coil. See the shorting wire across this resistor which is in parallel with this coil, takes that coil out of the circuit because I want to be testing on the under the same conditions. Plus the uh, low pass filter capacitor is not on the input as well. So let's try this one. 0.27 microfarad. Here we get a little ring. It dampens away. I would say that is stable. I don't want to see a continuous oscillation. Finally, a one microfarad. You see a damped out ring there. I'm probably going into current limiting again, but yeah. Even with this coil removed from the output, this amp will not break into oscillation with those pure capacitive loads on it. It's a very good stable amp. Very similar circuit though. I'm just not seeing why this one is not working as well. I mean, it's pretty much based on this design. Maybe it's the different transistors I'm using. I don't know. It's well bypassed. I mean, it's got thick planes right next to the output stage. The input stage has its own filtered supply. Yep, some more research to be done, I guess. Well, I'm going to stop it here. There's no sense in continuing until I resolve these issues. Maybe it is these transistors. I don't know. 
it shouldn't be an issue with the uh, saturating voltage amplification stage. There's really not much difference in those transistors and they're degenerated the same and everything. But I don't know. As far as the instability, it could be these transistors. You know, these are much better. These 2SC5200 and 2SA1943 and these are just some old transistors pulled out of a car stereo amplifier that I had 30 years ago. I can't, like I said, I can't fit the larger ones on this board, so that's the one reason I, I'm using them. Plus, at the time, I didn't have any extras, so. Yep, some unhappiness here. I need to go back to the drawing board, do some redesign, and see if I can fix this. I don't want to release a junky product, an unstable product with problems. I want it to perform like the 501 did in its tests. So, I'll leave it at that. And I thank you for watching.